Hello and welcome students. In today's lecture, we will discuss about stresses in the bars of uniformly tapering circular sections. We can see in the figure what is the meaning of tapering. Tapering means the conical shape road in which there is a larger diameter at one end and there is a smaller diameter at the other end. You can see this in the figure. This is the tapering road and it is the front view having length L. The diameter at the left corner A is drawn over here and the diameter at the right corner B is drawn over here. It is the minor diameter and it is the major diameter. Major diameter is D1 and minor diameter is D2. The tapering road is subjected to tensile force P at both the ends. Total length is L and remember that from point A means from left side, from left side at a distance X, one small rectangular or you can say one small circular strip is cut out having thickness DX. It is at a distance of X from left corner E. Now, we have to assume that this tensile force P is acting throughout the object means on the small circular strip of length or thickness dx there is also a pull force P is acting. Now let us consider a circular bar AB of uniformly tapering circular section shown in figure. Now what are the notations in this? What is P? It is the pull on the bar. What is L? It is the length of the bar. What is D1 and D2? Diameter of the bigger end of the bar and diameter of the smaller end of the bar. Now what happens while doing calculations for delta L? We want to find the change in length of this bar. So you can see the same figure over here also. Now we are interested in finding DX. Now what is this DX? It is the diameter of this circular ring. Suppose the diameter of this circular ring is dx. Why it is dx? Because it is changing from point to point. If you are nearer to point A, then diameter of the strip may be over here, maybe over here, maybe somewhere over here, and maybe somewhere over here. Okay, the so strip can be cut out from any of the sections. So diameter dx of the strip is varying accordingly. Okay, so now what is the general formula? It is d1 minus d1 minus d2 into x by L. How it comes? How it comes? Suppose this is the distance x. So what, how the calculation comes when you are traveling a distance of L meter like this then diameter is decreasing from d1 to d2. So while you have traveled the distance L, the decrease in diameter will be d1 minus d2. Okay. Again repeating. While you have traveled the distance L, then decrease in diameter will be d1 minus d2. Then what is the diameter when you have traveled the distance x? Then what is the diameter change? What is the change in diameter? while you have traveled the distance x. So by doing cross multiplication you will get x into d1 minus d2 upon l. x into d1 minus d2 upon l. This is the change in diameter which is subtracted from d1 then you will get the answer of strip diameter dx. Now assume that d1 minus d2 into sorry d1 minus d2 upon this l is equal to constant k. Here it is written that k is equal to d1 minus d2 upon l. So this is the diameter of the strip itself. Okay. Now we are interested in finding the change in length of the diameter, change in length of the strip dx. Okay. So for that, first of all, find the cross section area of the strip. Now what is the cross section area of the circular strip? It is pi by 4 d square always, cross sectional area from the side view. So pi by 4 D square means what? D means diameter of the strip. That is D1 minus Kx whole square. Now what is stress? Stress is equal to force upon area. Force P 
is pull force acting throughout the object means pull force acting on the strip also divided by area of the strip is already calculated earlier pi by 4 d by minus kx whole square just arranging the terms again 4 is going into the numerator so it will become 4p upon pi into d1 minus kx whole square and strain strain what is strain it is equal to stress upon young's modulus so stress can be replaced over here from the above term divided by e so by rearranging we will get 4p upon pi into d1 minus kx whole square upon m2 e so this is the strain for the elementary circular strip let us go ahead now what is the elongation what is the elongation elongation is equal to strain into original length the strain is epsilon x and original length of the strip is dx means you can find that it is the thickness dx which is going to increase due to pull force p so by replacing the value of epsilon x you will get 4p upon pi d1 minus kx square into e and multiplied by dx now this is the final change in length or final elongation for the one strip only so there are number of circular strips or streaks with the uh, total elementary bar so if you have to find the total elongation of the tapering bar then you have to integrate such elongations such number of elongations while the limit of integration will be from 0 to l means total length of the object okay so delta l is equal to integration 0 to l the same term over here now while doing the calculations remember that 4p upon pi e will be constant and remaining term will be as it is now d1 minus kx raised to 2 that is the integration like 1 upon x square so 1 upon x square or you can say d1 minus kx raised to minus 2 dx so integration will be d1 minus kx raised to minus 2 plus 1 upon minus 2 plus 1 that is the minus 1 minus 1 over here you can do this calculation in your rough book also this is the very critical integration you must practice at your own minus k here the coefficient of x will be minus k which is written always 1 divided by minus k means 1 upon coefficient of x limit of integration is 0 to l so minus k into minus 1 will become k and it will be get out from the bracket 4p upon pi e k now there is a power minus 1 so again the term will be 1 upon d1 minus k x raised to 0 to l by replacing the upper limit and lower limit you will get 4p upon pi e k 1 upon d1 minus k l minus 1 upon d1 so this is the basic integration of the terms substituting the value back k is equal to d1 minus d2 upon l we will get this term d1 delta l is equal to 4p upon pi e k now k means d1 minus d2 upon l and again 1 upon d1 minus k l so d1 minus d2 upon l into l minus 1 upon d1 l l will be cancelled out divided by so the simplification will be 4p l upon pi e d1 minus d2 1 upon d2 minus 1 upon d1 is equal to 4pl upon pi e d1 minus t2 as it is and taking the LCM in the bracket so we will get d1 minus t2 upon d1 d2. So final answer of the delta L will be 4pl upon pi e d1 d2. So this is the basic delta L equation for circular tapering object. Now let us check some numericals based on this formula. Let us start 3.9. A circular alloy bar 2 meter long. So given data is L equal to 2 meter. 2 into 10 raised to 3 mm. Uniformly tapers from 30 mm diameter to 20 mm diameter. So bigger diameter is always D1 and the smaller diameter is always D2. So D1 is equal to 30 mm and D2 is equal to 20 mm written over here. Calculate the elongation means find delta L of the road under an axial force of 50 kN. So 50 into 10 raised to 3 newton is the tensile force P. Take E for the alloy as 140 gigapascal. 
E means Young's modulus which is equal to 140 gigapascal. So 140 into 10 raised to 3 Newton per mm square. We know that elongation of the road. What is elongation of the road? Delta L is equal to 4 P L upon pi E D1 D2. Now which type of data is available to us? You can see P is equal to 50 into 10 raised to 3. 4 is the constant term. L equal to 2 into 10 raised to 3. Pi is constant term. E is given to you 140 into 10 raised to 3. D1 and D2 are major and minor diameters which is 30 mm and 20 mm respectively. So just by replacing the value over here, you will get the answer of delta L means elongation. That is 1.52 mm. This is the basic numerical based on circular tapering object. Let us see even more numerical. Now this is very critical and very important numerical. A round tapered alloy bar 4 meter long is subjected to load as shown in figure. The smaller diameter is 20 mm over here and the bigger diameter is 40 mm over here. The length is divided in three parts 1 meter, 2 meter and 1 meter again. Now what is the calculation? Find the change in length of the bar if the Young's modulus is 120 giga Pascal, 120 into 10 raised to 3 Newton per mm square. Now you must remember that here there are number of forces acting intermittently within the object which is 30 kN compressive at point A, 50 kN left side at point B, 70 kN right side at point C and 50 kN again left side at point D. Now checking the solution length L is equal to 4 meter is equal to 4 into 10 raised to 3 mm total length. Force P1 is equal to 50 kN, 50 into 10 raised to 3. P1 means the force at point D. Force P2 equal to 70 kN at point C. And modulus of elasticity equal to 120 GPa. Here two forces are considered 50 and 70. Why? Just see the numerical again, you will get your answer. From the geometry of the figure, we find the diameter of the bar at B. Now, we have to calculate the diameter at B as well as we have to calculate the diameter at point C which is not available to us. We are knowing the diameter at point A and D only. Let us check again. For point D, diameter at point B is equal to 20 plus 40 minus 20. What is 20? It is diameter at point A, the smaller diameter. Plus major diameter minus smaller diameter means minor diameter into total length 1 by 4. This is the formula as we have studied in the theory. So answer will be 25. And similarly acting for diameter at point C, we will get 25. Now how this 25 is coming? 40 minus 20, 2 by 4. How this is coming? This 2 is x means the distance of point C. You can see in the previous figure. Yes. Here from left side the distance is uh, 1 meter for point B. So it is 1 divided by total length 4 and the diameter uh, reference diameter for point B is 20 mm at the left corner. Now while finding the diameter at point C the reference diameter will be this which we have calculated 25 mm and the distance from that point is 2 meters. So answer is 2 divided by total length 4. So you can see in this calculation it is 25 at the diameter of point B which is calculated earlier plus 40 minus 20 remains as it is because the formula is D1 minus D2 divided into 2. 2 means reference distance from this point 25 point means point B and total length is 4. So answer will be 35 mm. So this is the critical technique to find diameter at point B and diameter at point C. So you must remember this technique again and again. Okay. You just practice this technique at your own. Now how the loads is divided. So the part is divided into three categories AB, BC and CD respectively. You can see now in according to the load. In the previous figure, at point at uh, at part AB, the uh, left corner means left edge at point A, the force is 30 kN right side. So again, checking this is the AB part 30 kN force right side. So for balancing this 30 kN, we have to apply 30 kN left side also. 
and the diameter is 20 and 25 respectively length is 1 meter now how this load is calculated again you can check at point B this edge B is common in both the objects so first of all let us go back at this point at this edge at point B 50 kilo newton force left side is acting okay 50 kilo newton force left side is acting remember this so what now at the same edge B total load should be 50 so now here it is 30 kilo newton left side force is acting then 20 kilo newton right side force is acting so the total force should be total force should be 50 kilo newton left side now at point C the load is 70 and at point D the load is 50 so how it will come at point D the load is 50 so to balance this 50 again and point C what is at point C you can check back what is at point C point C total load is 70 kilo newton so at point C total load will be 20 and 50 that is 70 kilo newton again so this is the balancing of the load so now what we have to calculate we have to calculate delta L again so you can check delta L for the three parts delta L1 means AB delta L2 means BC and delta L3 means CD the formula remains same for all the objects 4PL 1 pi E d1 d2 4pl upon pi e d1 d2 4pl upon pi e d1 d2 d1 d2 means da db dpdc and dc dd respectively all the values are available to you 4 will be as it is length will be uh, sorry load will be 30 into 10 ratio 3 how it comes this is the part one for this load is 30 30 for the second part 20 and for the last part 50 length will be 1 meter 2 meter and 1 meter and diameters are 20 30, 20 25 25 and 35 and then after 35 and 40 so these are the values which are to be replaced over here so by doing the calculations you will get delta l1 equal to 0.64 mm delta l2 equal to 0.48 mm and delta l3 equal to 0.38 mm but meanwhile you must remember that for the second part the force is compressive from both the sides so length of the second part will be decreasing so while changing while calculating the total change in length delta l you should replace part 2 as a negative value delta l1 minus delta l2 plus delta l3 so by replacing all the values you will get the total answer positive 0.54 mm which is decreasing okay so this is the change in length 0.54 mm actually it is increasing in answer so this is the basic numerical which we have studied for the tapering objects this part this portion of the chapter is very very tough you just uh, revise the theory again and again and then after just practice this numericals this is the tough numerical having lesser chances to be asked in the GTU exam but you just remember the theory always this numerical is not of much importance but the theory is having larger value in the weightage of GTU exam so students that is for the today we will meet in the next lecture thank you